Distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allow me to begin by extending special thanks and appreciation to the organizers of this August gathering, the Conference of Montreal, particularly Mr. Nicholas Remillard. President and Chief Executive Officer of the International Economic Forum of the Americas. I am delighted to be here with you to share my thoughts. I would like to begin by highlighting the growing gaps laid bare by the COVID-19 pandemic in the resilience of the health, transport, food, and energy sectors. The devastating impact of the pandemic also offers an unprecedented opportunity to rethink and forge a more equitable and resilient path towards the sustainable development goals. According to the 2018 New Climate Economy Report, economic recovery and green growth are not mutually exclusive. On the contrary, shifting to a new low carbon and resilient climate economy can help create over 65 million new jobs worldwide and lead to significant economic growth. As a South-South multilateral development institution, the Islamic Development Bank Group is committed to supporting a green and sustainable recovery in its 57 member countries, benefiting more than 1.7 billion people worldwide. As a holistic response, the bank approved its strategic preparedness and response program to help member countries contain, mitigate, and recover from the, from the impact of the COVID-19 by adapting a 3R approach, respond, restore, and restart. Under the program, the IDB Group has committed over $4.5 billion covering emergency health response, SME support, and economic recovery in agriculture, food security, water, and sanitation sectors. It targets over 60 million beneficiaries, creating more than 65,000 jobs and supporting over 30,000 health workers. Looking ahead, the, the IDB will ensure it can deliver on supporting green economic recovery while meeting its climate change commitments in member countries. Ladies and gentlemen, the path to green economy in developing countries will require long-term support from development partners in the following areas. First, prioritizing green and climate resilient development investments. We should support the transition to green low emission climate resilient economies in our member countries while ensuring this is done in a just and fair manner considering local, e local e econo economies dynamics and readiness. The bank has made an ambitious commitment that by 2025, at least 35% of IDB operations will be in climate finance. Second, ramping upstream, upstream country dialogue and advisory services. When engaging with its member countries, the bank takes the opportunity to link its operations with countries' nationally determined contributions, NDC, and long-term climate resilient, low carbon development strategies. This must be coordinated with peer development institutions to increase effectiveness. The bank also supports the development and implementation of NDCs and long-term strategies, as it is currently doing in Nigeria, Lebanon, and Palestine with funding from the NDC partnership. In addition, 
mainstream climate action and environmental considerations in countries' national, sectoral, and financial plans is a high priority for the bank and a crucial part of its upstream engagement. Third, fostering innovation and mobilizing the private sector to achieve scale. Working mainly through its private sector entities, the IDB plays a, catalyst, a catalytic role in leveraging private investments towards green recovery and growth in member countries. To give a few examples, in, in 2019, the IDB and Trine, a crowdfunding platform solely specialized in off-grid solar sector and actively operating in sub-Saharan Africa and South Asia, launched a partnership for impact. The IDB will match up to 33% of all eligible loans provided through the platform with Sharia compliant financing. This will help finance off grid solar SMEs, such as the Kenya based Green Light Planet, which received IDB financing of 1 million euros through Trine, providing 66 million people with access to clean energy before the end of 2022. IDB has developed a sustainable finance framework through which it has successfully issued a 1 billion euro green suku, which is an Islamic equivalent to bonds, in 2019, and a $2.5 billion sustainability suku in 2021. The largest of their kind, the, these issuances will help finance renewable energy, clean transportation, energy efficiency, climate smart agriculture, and agroforestry, sustainable water and wastewater management, and the creation of green jobs, among others. Another key initiative was the bank's support to the Saudi presidency during the 2020 G20 meetings, where leaders endorsed the Circular Carbon Economy Platform. With its four R's framework, reduce, reuse, recycle, and remove, this platform recognizes the importance of reducing emissions while addressing system efficiency and national circumstances. In addition, the IDB hosts the $2.5 billion Lives and Livelihood Fund with donors including King Salman Humanitarian Aid and Relief Center, Abu Dhabi Fund for Development, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, UK Aid, and Qatar Fund for Development. This fund supports the most vulnerable people in the bank's low-income member countries. Finally, the bank strategy is anchored in supporting South-South cooperation. For example, through its reverse uh, linkage program, the bank has launched an alliance for climate action which helps member countries access green technologies and, and solutions through South-South exchange and learning. Ladies and gentlemen, the recent conclusions of the sixth assessment report of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change urge development institutions to play their role in ramping down global greenhouse emissions. However, the current trend and projected impacts, including the most devastating weather extremes, will significantly affect developing countries' economies already hit by the COVID-19 crisis. Supporting and financing low emission development plans by ensuring that all operations are aligned with the mitigation goals of the Paris Agreement and climate-proofing investments will help our member countries avoid bearing the costs of an action estimated to be at least 5% of global GDP. On the other hand, investing in green and resilient infrastructure could create millions of green jobs and offer us a path out of this pandemic. Let us act now. Let us work fast for greener, developed, inclusive economies in our member states. Moreover, with our development partners and the countries in the region, the Islamic Development Bank Group will continue delivering its financial support to its member countries to promote regional cooperation. Thank you very much for your attention. 
And I look forward to hearing from all of you. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.